we will next hear uh, from Chris O'Brien, who is the head of market development for Ehrlich and Solar, um, as soon as he is able to make his way up here, since I called on him early. Thank you, Carol. Uh, well, thanks. I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here today and, and would also like to tell a, a couple of generally positive stories about solar. Let me begin with just a little bit of background about who our, about our company, because it's, a, it's not a well-known name uh, outside of Switzerland. Uh, we're, we're a 100-year-old Swiss company, uh, revenues about overall about $3.5 billion. Um, the solar segment is one small piece of that, probably the, the newest and smallest of six business segments. Uh, but we have, across all segments, about 1,500 employees in the U.S., um, in Indiana, Illinois, Pennsylvania, um, and North Carolina. And, uh, but our solar segment today is, is relatively small. So what do we do? Uh, we're, we're fun fundamentally, it's a, we're a, a technology company, and our technology is we, we make the stuff that makes panels. So if you will, we make very good pizza ovens and a, pizza, and a PV panel is a pizza. So, so we, we, we make the pizza ovens. Um, we do that very uh, quite well. We, we invest a, a tremendous amount in innovation and uh, technology. Over the last several years, we've invested about $70 million each year um, into improving our technology. Um, the, this, we, the, our, our equipment produces thin film silicon PV panels. Um, what we have done by continuing to invest has been to improve the competitiveness and the cost of production of making those panels to make PV and solar energy much more affordable for end customers. Examples, we have just since 2008, the expected cost of making a panel with our standard equipment has reduced from uh, $1.50 per watt by about 50% to about 70 cents per watt. Um, the same piece of hardware, basically, the same set of hardware that, that uh, a couple years ago made 60 megawatts per year, now makes 120 megawatts per year. Just we get, what we're doing fundamentally is bringing the smarts of the semiconductor industry, the same people that have you know, uh, brought down the cost of iPads and, and flat screen TVs and brought that, that same set of thinking and, and experience with technology roadmaps into the uh, PV industry. So um, we are, I, I think what we have today, you know, we are fund a, a potential catalyst for very competitive new solar manufacturing. We have strong, we have customers across the globe. Uh, if today our customers are in Europe and in Asia. Uh, there is a tremendous, probably the strongest fa growth market for us is in Asia. Um, important lesson, important message is that that's not because labor is cheap. Yeah, I think that's because really the, the policies to attract manufacturing have been extant and stable and, and, the, and have worked. Um, I was in Germany last week at a trade show there. I mean, Manning mentioned the fact that the German market has outpaced the U.S. and again, largely because the policies there have delivered a large market size. And, and the scale is staggering. I mean, the, the scale is um, roughly eight, the, the installations in Germany last, last year were roughly eight times the installations um, in the U.S. market. The U.S. market's been growing very quickly. But a vision, but Germany provides a vision of what stable policies can achieve. The the trade show that I visited had 80,000 visitors. There were uh, roughly 14 exhibit halls, each of which is probably the size of the Washington Convention Center. There were just you know, it was staggering just to see the amount of the the, the, the scale of the industry. Solar pr provides several times more of the, of Germany's electricity uh, than it does here in the U.S. In parts of Bavaria, on a sunny day. Solar provides up to 30, it can provide up to 30% of the power that's being delivered into the grid. So it's, it's, it's really uh, transformed the market there. At the same time, uh, an important part of the buzz there was that there were uh, a couple things. One is that people are seeing prices of PV coming down. Uh, Manning mentioned earlier how low the prices are already. They're expected to come down ev even further. That's, that's good news for end customers in all markets. Um, Germans have achieved Despite the fact that you know, the, the wages are relatively high, they've achieved uh, costs of installing PV systems that are roughly half of what they are here. So it's, again, just the scale matters. And, and so we're, we're optimistic that we can see solar continuing to become more and more af affordable with stable policies here. Um, there is a, a, a strong interest 
um, and a, I think a consensus view there that the German or that, that the, uh, the the next big market to pop. This is among a, a conference of global companies from Asia, Europe, U.S., that the, that the U.S. is really the next big market to pop. People are watching the market very carefully. They're optimistic, they, but they need the stable policies in order to take the, the investments that they've made and just build the market channels here, build the production facilities to b really build out the supply chain here in the U.S. I think that... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I think that one important uh, open issue is, you know, I think that the stability to, of the policies to some extent will dictate the amount of investment that comes to the U.S. I think, you know, as, as a company that is selling manufacturing equipment, we have a strong interest in uh, making sure that, in having U.S. customers. And, and there's the, uh, when we look at our turnkey factory, and we run the numbers and say, what if you, if you put this factory in China, if you put this factory in East Germ or, you know, Eastern Germany, if you put this factory in the U.S.? I mean, the, the, the costs do not vary very much. Ba basically, it's, you know, the, the difference is in the noise and more largely offset by the cost of transporting panels from one place to the other. So I think the opportunity is here to really create uh, not only a strong end market for PV, uh, for, for, for solar energy here in the U.S., but really to create a stronger value chain using some of the newer and more innovative technologies. Um, I think whether that happens or whether we become a, a, an, a large end market that imports a lot of, uh, m most of that, that product, um, I think will depend to some extent on the stability of the policies going forward. One bit of, uh, last bit of you know, good news I think that came out in the same uh, report that Manning uh, highlighted earlier, the, the Solar Market Insight report, which is now available on, on SIA's website, um, is that the, uh, the, the U.S. is actually, that the, the manufacturing of panels in the U.S. grew last year uh, quite, quite significantly, and um, an assessment that was done last year showed that the U.S. was actually a net exporter of, uh, of, of photovoltaics if you consider the entire value chain. That's important. So some of the policies that were put in place to stimulate manufacturing investment worked in terms of uh, pr providing incentives for investment, but, but I would say particularly not, not only in module manufacturing, but also in the production of some of the key materials that are used in making PV modules. So we have, a, a, we have today a fairly good picture in terms of export, um, in terms of our supply chain. It's, it, it's fragile. It, it, it's fragile and, and, and that they, because of the policies that are in place elsewhere to draw module manufacturers there, um, you know, it, it, it's, we, we need the uh, continuation of that uh, stabil stable policy regime to make sure that the investments continue throughout the whole supply chain here um, in the U.S. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stop there. I think I probably, I, I probably ignored my one-minute card. <laughs> A few questions, uh, because I think what's really critical too, in terms of what you've been hearing from all three of these speakers, in terms of real jobs, real economic growth, um, and it really means, uh, you know, investment in manufacturing here in this country and um, a development of domestic market as well as overseas. Mm -hmm. Question. Um, it, 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 it certainly has been. Um, it, it, uh, I, I, it, it has been, but it's, but it's changing very quickly. So, so I think that the compensation rates currently for residential customers, I, 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 I need to get the exact figure, but it's something on the range of the 50% higher than the retail electric rate for systems that are put on small uh, roofs. Probably a Probably about the same. Uh, probably about the same uh, premium for uh, commercial customers. There's a there's a decided shift in Germany now towards steering solar uh, installations, to towards favoring installations that are on rooftops. Um, they've introduced policies increasingly that are more like the policies that we have here in the U.S., where customers are 
taking, getting the re full retail value of the electricity that they consume, and then they, they're given a, uh, uh, <coughs> a, 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 an incentive on top of, uh, on top of that. But the, 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 those feed-in tariff rates are coming down markedly. But that's part of the reason why the, the systems of prices have come down. Um, also part of the reason why uh, developers are looking to other markets, uh, including you know, especially the U.S., as uh, potential growth opportunities. Okay, over here. My question is that all of the panelists said that the policies are needed. So what what are the key policies that are needed from for the solar industry to be boosted in the U.S.? It's yours. Again, when you look, when you look around the globe, and, and, the, and the way that people have done it, the, the, there are different policies that you can pursue. Germany, obviously, being one, but the one commonality is is where the deployment of renewables is successful. You have a stable, reliable policy that you put in place that the private sector can depend on. So, if you want to look in the United States, what are the challenges that you know from from visiting with our membership? The, the challenges that you have is finance. You have to have the the capital up front to put the you know to deploy the asset. But once you do. Uh, you, you get good results. So, uh, in terms of uh, the priorities for the solar industry um, in, the, in the legislative realm, um, obviously retention of the underlying investment tax credit. Uh, it's proven to be extremely successful. Um, it's doing what it's supposed to do in terms of job creation. You're seeing dramatic drop in costs. You're getting increased deployment. So, when you put an incentive in place and looking at whether it's working or not, it's pretty clear it's working, and a lot of that has to do with reliability. Some other energy sectors have been plagued by on-again, off-again tax incentives, and, you, and the result is what you would expect in terms of their you know, volatility in their marketplace. But beyond that, when you look at uh, what, what happened in, you know, when the stock market turned down in 2008, uh, the economy is still not obviously fully recovered. You have a question of uh, liquidity and efficiency with those tax credits. Uh, you have the underlying 1603 program that's administered by the Treasury Department that does a very nice job of allowing uh, these, these partnerships that are often formed to deploy these, uh, to develop these projects. It allows you, it provides the, the liquidity that you need to make those deals work. That program has been extremely eff effective. Um, other, some of the things that, you know, we're looking at that are important is, is an industry. Obviously, there, there are regulatory requirements with siting issues. Uh, you, when you look at other, you know, other financing opportunities as well, um, you know, such as the development of a green energy bank, uh, the loan guarantee program has been particularly um, important to people who are doing concentrating solar power, which is obviously a very promising technology as well. Um, so there are a variety of things that we can do here in the United States to really allow us to reach our full potential because, because echoing your, your sentiments here, um, in the U.S., if we do this right, we're going to lead the world in solar deployment. When you look at our solar resources, there's no reason that we shouldn't. We've got innovative companies that are doing amazing things across technologies, whether it's commercial PV or whether it's CSP. It's all going to be effective. It's all going to work if we have the foresight and the vision to keep these policies in place and improve them. I might just mention CSP is concentrated solar power. Okay. And in terms of the 1603 um, uh, program, um, I believe that that right now would phase out the end of 20. Right. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a temporary provision. It expires at the end of this year. Um, it was extended for one year. Right. Year. And so right now there's kind of a big rush to get as many things in before that expires. And I think one of the things that, that we have certainly learned as we've looked at uh, policy issues across the globe and what we is clearly saw um, in, in terms of the Germany experience was that the continuity of policy was terribly important in terms of investors, in terms of manufacturing, because in the United States too much our policy has looked like hiccups on a graph so that you've got it for a year maybe maybe two years and then you don't know whether it's going to be in it again or whatever and so it's been so tenuous that it has really kind of I think slowed us down from what the experience has been in other countries and we've heard that over and over again from people in the private sector as well as from governments. Um, I think that takes us to the end. I want to thank you very very much.
Um, these are really, really important areas of economic growth for our country.